with Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday? I'm doing great. A girl's doing great. A family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great through these crazy chaotic times. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. So you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media. Help spread the message. Help spread the word. That would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all my videos. So what's up, what's up, what's up? I just wanted to say, today is almost exactly three years to the day that I got out to treatment. You guys have played a huge role in my success. I just want to say thank you. Today I am 39 years old. I feel like I'm just getting so old. But I feel like at the same time, I'm still hungry and motivated like I was when I was a young guy just for different things. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all your support and just helping me along the way, it means the world. So because of that, I'm bringing the long awaited Penetang Super Jail video. Now I was hesitant to do the video because I did Lindsay, I did Maplehurst and they're basically the same thing, but they're not. Now Penetang Super Jail holds 1184 inmates and was the first private prison in Canada, actually the only private prison in Canada. It was a failed Mike Harris experiment. Basically, he wanted to build all kinds of super jails and cut the budget back by privatizing them. The only problem is privatizing caused bad conditions. Underpaid staff. Keep in mind in a private prison, they're probably not making much more than $15 an hour to start. It's not unionized. They're not protected. They probably don't have full benefits and stuff like that right away. They probably have to earn all that. So they're in a, working in a dangerous environment underpaid. Like I said in past videos, that leads to resentment, that leads to frustration, and that leads to not many people wanting to work there, people quitting off and on, off and on, leading to shortage of staff. And it didn't only lead to that. In 2003, December, there was a massive riot where almost 100 inmates tried to breach the prison and get out. They had a battering ram. I don't know if they made it out of doors or what, but I remember being inside while this happened and hearing the stories about them smashing down all the showers, breaching several levels of security and advancing through early stages of getting out of the prison. I don't know exactly how far they go because the government lies. The government report says they were under control within two hours and everybody was back in their cells. Now. I'm sure at some point everybody got back in their cells because the ISIT team will come in and you up. But I don't know if that's exactly true. I don't know if that amount of damage could have been done in two hours. Two hours? But the reason why they smash up from what I heard was racism, bad conditions, horrible food, lockdown all the time, tiny portions of food, and just being mistreated as a whole by the staff and by the whole system. So in 2006, after a murder happened, this murder was a very serious case and everybody across Ontario knew about it. It was because it was not really over anything major, not really what you would expect to hear about somebody getting killed. And keep in mind, these prisons were built to provide added security, top of the line, uh, security systems and stuff which was supposed to provide a safer place for inmates but within one year or a couple years of that place opening there was already extreme violence and by 2004 they had their first homicide this person was murdered over a game of risk now I know a lot of the times people can underplay and just say look man if you just go in and do your time you'll be fine and for the most part, that's true. But in any situation, things can go left really quickly depending on who it is you're doing time with. Now, I'm sure that person is not a horrible monster. I'm sure it was a heat of the moment thing. Sometimes your manhood can get challenged. Pride can get the better of people. People are young. People are hungry to build their name and reputation. So they get at somebody and whack, somebody gets poked somebody loses their life and that's exactly what happened and they're saying that it could have been prevented as a matter of fact from what i read 
Supposedly, an inmate had written a kite to the staff saying that there was a knife on this block and that somebody was about to be murdered. So they locked the prison down. They did a brief search. I'm sure the search wasn't that thorough. Keep in mind, these are underpaid staff. They probably don't want to be looking at everybody's buttholes. They probably don't want to be doing all of that. So how thorough was that search? Boom, search completed, let everybody out. And within days, somebody is murdered. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up this story is because it's a perfect example of how things can really just go bad quickly. Losing your life over a board game. I don't know if that's the full story behind it. I wasn't there, but that's the story that is out there. And just think about this. You're, you're on a block for a, for a minute. Say three, four, five months you live with everybody on that block and you built up a certain rapport with people. And after a certain amount of time, the tension on a block goes down for you once you've kind of landed there and people kind of accept you as a member of that range. And over time, you'll build up comforts by talking to people, joking with people, laughing with people. But keep in mind, Penetang, Lindsay, Maplehurst, the South, they may be a provincial jail, but they're a maximum security institution. Therefore, whether you're in for driving tickets, whether you're in for theft under 5,000, whether you're in for attempted murder, whether you're in for first degree murder, you're all going to be in the same unit. So that person sitting across from you, you don't know him. And chances are, if you're a new guy on the block, you're not going to be saying, yo, dude, what are you in for? And even if you do, there's no guarantee they'll tell you without giving you a smack in your face. And there's no guarantee that what they tell you will be true. They might think this is none of your damn business. So you, after time, build up a rapport with these guys on your block that you don't know. You think these guys are in for doing stuff similar to you. Maybe you're in for a break and enter. You think people on there are for robberies. Maybe there's the occasional lifer. But you'll be able to tell who they are because they obviously must be crazy if they're out killing people. So you're playing cards. You're a new guy. Never really been through the system. Playing with a, a guy as your partner. And this guy says, don't get up. I'm gambling. Don't mess the game up, bro. And you're yeah, 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 yeah. So later you're playing. Boom, you make somebody go down. You make uh, 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 some money get lost. And then boom, you make some money get lost again. Now your partner across the table is looking at you like, bro, what a waste guy. Like this guy's just costing me to lose everything. I've seen it many times. Resentment happens, especially over games. Especially if it's a partnering thing, if there's gambling involved. People expect people to be on the up and up. If they think somebody's cheating, it can get bad. If they think people are teaming up, it can get bad. And sometimes people just don't like losing. Mouths start flying. Words start getting tripped. Yeah, I'm out butt it, boy. Whatever it is that you say, just you might not even be serious. But that person that you're standing across from or you're playing against, gambling against, that you just think is a regular dude like you happens to be a killer and really won't allow you to say nothing disrespectful at any time without doing something about it and you make that mistake yeah fuck you man something as simple as that can make you end up with a knife in your heart and the reason why i do these videos is to help you guys understand that maybe you go to prison one two three four five six seven eight times and it's great you're living it up, you're smoking, you're chilling. Believe me, man, I've seen it happen many times. Shit just goes bad for people. And it may not even be their fault. Somebody else might get them caught up in something. You might just be wrong place, wrong time. Somebody might just, just not like your face. And boom, it goes bad for you real quick. Penetang Super Jail. Double tier, you walk on the... You walk down a long hallway to your pod. Each pod has six ranges and a little tiny triangle outside yard, which is just three concrete walls with mesh above it. Each range is like a pie shape with all glass at the front. So you can see across to all six ranges in your pod. There's 32 guys on each block. All the food is steamed. I don't know if it's steamed or heated, but it comes in these little microwavable trays with a plastic thing on top. They're burning lava hot. They're tiny. It's about enough food to serve like a 12-year-old. And it's gross. 
Central North Correctional Center is on the list as one of Ontario's six most dangerous jails or prisons. I know the reason why they clock higher than the federal jails in terms of violence is because it's day-to-day -day mayhem, right? When you're locked down so much and then let out and then locked down so much and then people are scrapping, tension just builds, 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 builds. And there's fights all the time. They're little fights. In the pen, when stuff happens, usually it's way more serious. It's way more violent. But it happens more sporadically unless you're in a maximum security institution. But in provincial, everyday stuff's happening. It's crazy. All the time. Friday night fights. People coming in with drugs and cigarettes and guys wanting to fight for that. And this guy doesn't get enough. And this guy doesn't feel like he gets enough. So now they're beefing. Guys are drinking on block and now they're beefing just because they were drinking. It's happened many times. Prison is unsafe and Penetang Super Jail is just another prison in that long, long line of prisons waiting to take your name. They don't care if you're black, white, Aboriginal, Spanish. They don't care. They will allow you to come in and have a bed for free. Because what you do, you do is you're ensuring their paychecks, the pro probation officers' paychecks, parole officers' paychecks, judges, court clerks. You're making all of them get paid every time you walk through that door. That is why they create the revolving door process. And those super jails specifically are built to break you down. They put you in these empty Fish tanks, basically. There's nothing for you to do. And they make you sit month after month after month without accomplishing anything at court. And eventually they just throw some easy plea bargain at you so they can stack convictions. And if you don't take that, if, if, if they feel like they have enough evidence to, to convict you, they're going to take you to trial. And when they do take you to trial, they're going to fry you. That's how the Canadian system works. Plea bargain, plea bargain, plea bargain, plea bargain. <laughs> Gotcha. Don't become a statistic of the system. These prisons are designed to have a revolving door policy. There's no rehabilitation. And they're not created to make you do better when you get out. Actually, it's total opposite of that. There's lots of violence at Penetang, just like Lindsay, just like Maplehurst. And another thing about Penetang is that you have a lot of different places mixing. So if you're from Barrie or anywhere surrounding Barrie, Muskoka, uh, uh, anywhere around Georgia Bay, anywhere in that area, Perry Sound, any of those places, you're going to go to Penetang Super Jail. And also the guys from Toronto that have long extended court dates, guys that um, basically like prelim to trial maybe there's a six month date so they just send you out to penitent so you have mixing of all these different groups of guys all these different cultures which leads to a lot of racism and a lot of violence i don't know how the racism is there now but i know when penitent first opened if you were from toronto you would have problems on a lot of blocks just for being there and if you were from penitent in toronto you would have a lot of problems just being there just was what it was at the time I haven't really been to Penetang in a long time, so I don't know how it is now, but I'm sure that still applies because those things never really change. It just might not be as serious. Lots of overdoses, crooked staff, lots and lots and lots of lockdown shortage of staff is what you can expect at Penetang Super Jail. Sure, you might see some of your homies. You might see some guys that you grew up with that you haven't seen in a while. But believe me, by the end of the day, your very first day, you're going to regret being there. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes to Penetang. Nobody goes to any jail. That's what I do. But that's not a reality, especially in 2021. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And sometimes that can land you in prison. Hopefully, my videos will help steer you in the proper direction and if you just happen to already be going to prison just give you that knowledge needed so you don't go in there green you don't piss anybody off and you manage to walk out alive sure jails here might be a little more lax and sure penitent might not be quite as crazy as the jails in toronto but it's still a super jail there's still 1200 guys there 
And believe me, you can get it. If you could please hit that like button, if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So, a prison that is famously known for this report I read where guards were saying that they were regularly getting urine and feces thrown in their face. <laughs> there was a period of time where that's what they dealt with regularly and imagine that as a live-in. Look at that buttholes and feces thrown in your face. Love each and every one of you. The new Maya Clark.